Hi, and welcome to my kitchen again. We're continuing our investigation of cooking with wine from all over the world. The greatest cuisines in the world have always used wine. And in my opinion, one of the greatest of all uh, is that of Italy. Now, let me uh, heat up a frying pan. We're going to start cooking Italian style with wine because it has to be. I'm going to move these glasses out of the way so we can function. Uh, the first thing that you want, to, uh, you want to think about in Italian food, I know that you've already done this. You think about garlic bread all the time, and, and uh, we don't do a very good job on that in this country. So I want to show you how they do it in Italy. It isn't at all the same kind of thing. Boy, what a mess I have today, huh? Glasses everywhere. Now, we're going to prepare something called bruschetta, which is very simple to do and very extravagant and utterly delicious. First of all, toast your bread. Let me show you the kind of bread I mean here. Cut bread into about one inch thick chunks. And this is good, good Italian bread. Good crunchy Italian. You can use a French sourdough if you like. You see how nice and thick that is? That's what I want. I want bread with body. Don't buy that uh, puffy, blown up American stuff that they make out of air and about one ounce of flour. We don't need it. Good stuff. All right. Now, I have toasted, better get a platter here for us. I've toasted two slices of this wonderful thick sliced bread, and I'm going to rub them with garlic. You just grab a clove of garlic and you rub it until the thing disappears. That's how you make bruschetta, real Italian garlic toast. There. And then you add, watch this, this is so much fun. Then you simply pour olive oil on the top. Just trickle on some olive oil. And this is served hot, of course. And this makes a classic meal. There. It is served, you can live on this stuff. This is served along with a great salad. We'll chuck the old salad in here. A great salad, the bruschetta or toast, olives, and of course, a glass of wine. And you have a full Italian meal. You could live on this stuff. And it's delicious. And it's very good for you. Now, let me show you. So do the bruschetta. I think you'll love it. Channing and Jason and I and uh, Patty, we sat down one night and uh, uh, the four of us just gobbled up a whole loaf of bread with this stuff. It's wonderful. Now, let me show you how to make a quick Italian gravy. Uh, this recipe was sent to me, um, what's the word, several times by some of you who view uh, and who cook with me, and I'm very thankful. Uh, I can't give you all of the names, but um, this is a variation on some uh, recipes from southern Italy. I suppose it, um, if I'm being polite, uh, but understand I'm trying to be, this is really um, basic peasant food in Italy. Uh, it's a tomato sauce, but it's made in a very rich manner, and you use it for everything. That's why they call it gravy. So we will begin right away with some olive oil in a hot frying pan. I don't know, my pan isn't quite hot enough yet. We want about a fourth of a cup of olive oil. And to that, we're going to add a couple of yellow onions, all chopped up. I'm not going to bother to show you how to chop up an onion. I'd rather cook. We'll do that with an, at another time. Two, uh, two yellow onions chopped up. And we're going to add six cloves of garlic. And I'm just going to dice it out here. Well, this has already been diced up for me. This is chopped enough. Six cloves. That's about six cloves. All right, we'll throw in some more. You can't put too much garlic in these things. It's impossible. We want to brown the vegetables. That's important. And we want to throw in some carrots. This is, this is one big fat carrot. Isn't he gorgeous? How did I get it cut up like that? Let me show you. Let me, I just dare you to watch. I have a gadget. I always have a new gadget for you, right? This one, it's called a mandolin. And it has a little, a little um, series of tiny blades so that when you want to, when you want to uh, slice things, you see, it will turn them into little sticks immediately. Isn't that a riot? I used to work for hours on this sort of thing. You just don't have to do that anymore. It's, uh, it's very inexpensive. It's around $20. You should find them in any good gourmet shop. And let's see, I've forgotten something. Um, celery. I want to put in some celery. And I'm going to chop up the whole works on a celery head or celery leaf. Excuse me, there was an argument with one of you in a letter. The madam, this is not, uh, this is not a stock of celery. This is a rib. The whole head is called a stock. The stock is not called a head. At least that's what my produce man tells me. And I'm going to stand by him. So I'm... <laughs> Keep writing, though. I'm not going to turn you down. It was very interesting. She was very adamant. She said, you should know better than to call that a, that a stock. Well, it isn't a stock. It's a rib. I'm not going to call it a stock. There. A little bit more. Anyhow, we want a good stock of celery or two. Let's try two, huh? Two stocks of celery into a very hot frying pan. The olive oil, the garlic. And we're going to saute that until it's brown. Now, I don't have time to do that 
because I want to cook with you. So we'll just continue and we'll go on with the rest of our of our um, vision here. And I need a kettle. Well, now, while that's cooking, we'll put together, isn't this wild, these kettles. I'm going to be cooking in stainless steel, and I've told you that I hate stainless steel because they're always so thin, but they're bringing these in from Italy now, uh, and it's called, um, what's the name, it's called Centurion, and it has, it has a jacket of aluminum inside the bottom so that uh, it will keep things um, from burning for you. And I warn you, this stuff's very expensive. But again, I, uh, I tell you over and over again, don't buy cheap cooking gear because you're going to have to keep replacing it. Thin stainless steel pans, even if they're electroplated with copper in the bottom, are still going to burn on you. Uh, this will not. It's a good thing. All right. I want to put into my kettle here. We'll begin with the tomato uh, puree. Now, if you, don't have a, if you don't have access to a puree, just buy a 28-ounce can of, um, of uh, tomatoes and uh, canned tomatoes and run them through the uh, food blender or the food processor. So let's begin. Notice I'm using a wooden spoon. I don't want anyone to bang on the edge of my good pots with a metal spoon. Nobody. There. One can of tomato paste. That's a six ounce can. And two, well, I've got these all over the place. Two 28 ounce cans of tomato puree. And so far, this looks to you just like a, a batch of normal tomato sauce, but it's not. It's going to be very rich, and then we're going to use it for all sorts of wonderful things. Italian gravy. This is common in Sicily. It's common in, uh, in, the, in the southern regions, you see. It's wonderful stuff. They have brought the tomato sauce to absolute glory. Nobody in the world can do it this well, or better, I should say. Now we want to add one quart of beef stock. Now you remember that I've made this myself. You can use canned bouillon if you like, but I would prefer that you use a good beef stock that you've, that you've made from scratch. Now, two cups of wine. I'm using red wine. And please note that my pitcher is a gimmick to disguise the fact that, I, <laughs> that I'm using jug wine. Good red jug. It says, in vino, in vino veritas. That's Latin. You know, this is an Italian show today. Latin for, in wine there is truth. Do you believe that? In vino veritas? The Jews say it differently. I'm adding two cups. There. The Jews don't say en vino veritas. They say, a uh, little wine goes in, little truth comes out. <laughs> uh, that one I know to be true. Absolutely. There. All right. The vegetables are just about finished here. So we'll continue now with, um, uh, let's see, what else do we need? The parsley. We'll throw that right in the kettle. Half a cup of chopped parsley. Oh, about a, about a half pound of mushrooms. And I've just kind of quickly sliced these up. Nice, fresh. Aren't they gorgeous? Why not throw the whole one in there? See who wins. Who gets a, whoever gets a whole mushroom gets a prize, huh? And we'll add our vegetables now. There. You see, when, they, when they're sautéed, you see the, the, the sugar that is browned on them? The sugar is um, natural in carrots and celery, and we want to uh, bring that sugar out. It makes a wonderful flavor. And it, it really makes a, a great difference in your cooking. What else do we need? Uh, now we have a whole series of herbs that we want to put in this. And we have, uh, I just measured these out so we don't have to stand here and play with the jar. I have a half teaspoon of red pepper flakes, crushed red pepper flakes, a tablespoon of oregano, a teaspoon of rosemary, two bay leaves, a tablespoon of basil, two whole cloves, and now you're going to say, that wasn't, a tablespoon of oregano. You're right, it certainly wasn't. Well, it's supposed to be. He put in a teaspoon for me. Someone else was helping me in the set. But all this goes in the pot now. The oregano, red pepper flakes, rosemary, bay leaves, two whole cloves, right into the pot. And now then we'll add to that some black pepper, crushed black pepper. Please uh, add, add quite a shot. Uh, I'm going to put in a good half tablespoon. Good heavens. Well, And I've crossed, uh, just, just ground this in my... Turkish coffee grinder. Did you see me use this before? It works great. I just love the thing. Now, to that we will add a bit of salt, probably a couple of tablespoons because you do really do have a large kettle here. This is going to cook for a while. And then we're going to add just a pinch of sugar, uh, approximately one teaspoon. There. Now the, the, the deal here is what we're going to do next. And that's to add some pork neck bones. 
pork, about a half pound of pork neck bones and about a half pound of chicken scraps. And I have some necks here. Those are both very inexpensive. You shouldn't pay any more than 49 or 59 cents a pound for either of those. Cover this and simmer it now for two hours. And let me show you what you get. Very close to heaven. I'll get this one out of the way because obviously I have one already prepared for you. Ah, let's see how it looks. Are you ready? Well, I'm ready. Here is the pot. Oh, this is so delicious. This is so delicious. It is so rich that I can't believe it. Now, let's try to use this properly in a dish. You can use it just like this, of course, on pasta. Uh, it's very rich because you, you've cooked uh, the, the pork and the chicken together for two hours. Take those pieces out, by the way. You don't want to serve them. Uh, they're pretty um, exhausted. You know, they're pretty worn out after cooking for two hours. They've flavored, uh, they've done what they're supposed to do. So you can get rid of them, feed them to the cat, or um, um, let them sit for a bit and eat a private lunch just for you.